Friend Marvin Telford. <clears throat> Marvin? Yeah. He's a good guy. Yes, he has his doubts about me. About Billy Joe coming here. Yes, he's a skeptical one, all right. I'm... I'm losing you. I... I'm weakening. Can you, can you say something quickly? I wish I could tell Billy Joe I love her. I just wish I could. She knows, I guess. Naive in the extreme. She'll give them the money, unless you expose this, this psychic for what he is, a charlatan. Well, suppose he's not. I mean, you said you heard Mr. Haskins' voice. Mr. Haskins has been dead almost five years. It had to be trickery or some clever imitation. I'll tell you the truth, Mr. Telford, I'm already working on another case. Hire someone else to cover it. I need you. You have a reputation for getting things done quickly. I'll pay you twice your usual fee. Yeah, Jenny? Yes, Chef called. Oh, he did? No, he needs your help now. Yeah, all right. <sighs> I'll be glad to take the case, Mr. Telford. Good, good. 
Call me as soon as you have anything. Yes, sir, I will. Oh, thank you, miss. Did you tell Chef to get a plane down here as fast as he can? He can't. Oh, what do you mean he can't? I just took on another job. He says you've got to come up and get him. It's one of those things he's in a hotel and you're supposed to call first. And he needs $15,000. He needs what? He knows I haven't got that kind of money. He's in trouble again. Okay. Okay. You know what I'm going to do? Where are you going? Out for a drive. Tony, come here. In case you drive to the airport, I booked you on a flight to San Francisco. That's the hotel, room 702. I assume he's still up there. Yes, Mr. Sampson, but he has to come down sometime. When he does, I want to see him in my office before you deal with him. Why? You ain't gonna get the money he owes you. I know that. I want to remember him as he was. Where did you say he was? I will return from the track in two hours. Have Mr. Thomas in my office then. Yes, sir. You let him get past. Nobody got past me. Then who's that over there? Go get Gigi. Go on. Go after him. Don't move from his door. I'll be outside just in case. Nobody got by me. Well, he couldn't have gotten by me. Come on, will you go upstairs? Did you just go out the other door? Oh, you clever girl, you. <laughs> I was standing there. You saw me. I got 20-20 vision. What do you think? I'm crazy or something? Would you go downstairs and, and get me a racing phone? But you already have a racing phone. I know it's an early one, but I need a later one. I'll be waiting for you right here. I'm breathing heavy. Punch your lights out. Where have you been? Here in San Francisco. I owe guy a little money. You call fifteen thousand dollars a little money? Fourteen. Oh, the hotel, the grand. Oh, cute. Cute. Did you bring it with you? Why would I get that kind of money? Chef, I don't understand you. I let you take a two-week vacation. You disappear for one month. Don't you know we run a detective agency? Twice the word, half the time. You run the agency. Nobody even knows I exist. As far as the whole world's concerned, I'm just another you. But that's what we agreed upon when we started the agency. Then nobody would know that there's two of us. Now, that's our edge. It's our bread and butter. I'm sick and tired of bread and butter. Okay, come on. Tell me, what's wrong? Nothing. Come on, tell me. Every time you want to quit, there seems there's something wrong. What's wrong? It seems like you care more for that agency than you do about me getting my legs broken. Oh, come on. Come to think of it, how'd you get past those three guys? What three guys? Three guys in the lobby. Uh, mean looking? One of them a black guy? Yeah. 
I almost think you passed them guys. Beautiful, there's two of them out there. Where's the stairway? Out to the right. Any more? Yeah, at the other end of the hall. Okay. All right. I'm telling you, I saw him downstairs driving away in a taxi. Oh, no way. Hey, what do I have to do? Break down the door to prove it to you? Hey, man, what's the matter with you? You go up, bananas. Now, come on. Come on. I'm telling you, man, he's in that room. Yes, and I'm telling you, I saw him downstairs driving away in a taxi. Yeah. Who's Hutchins? Guy cheating on his wife. Oh, one of those. You're handling it. Great. I called the Rainier Institute and set up an appointment for you tomorrow morning as Frank Baxter. Uh, oh, I made a reservation for Frank Baxter at the usual hotel on Sunset for Shep. Let me think. Oh, yeah. I called Lieutenant Martinez for the rundown on the Rainier Institute. I hope you made out okay with Shep. See you in the morning. What's the Rainier Institute? I'll explain it away at the hotel. Let's go. What's with you and those Frisco goons? I made a bet with a guy named Ben Sampson and lost. Thought I had his horse race all sewed up. Turned out he did. Chef, when are you going to stop trying to con people and think there's a fast buck be made? You mean there isn't? Of course there isn't. Well, tell me about the rabbits, George. What does that mean? What do you mean, what does it mean? Don't you ever watch television? Oh, come on. Cut it. Well, you're what probably big on Captain Kangaroo, aren't you? Up. Fine, but do me a favor. Next time he calls, I'm not in. Tony, that's a terrible thing to say. I mean it. Where's the Hutchins file? Under H. You know, I really can't say as I blame you too much. I mean, he's kind of selfish and weak, too. Weak in what way? Oh, everything. His character, his chin. But I always thought he turned you on. Oh, not like you. Oh, well. The day that I can't tell the difference between the two of you will be the day that I get contact lenses and a cane, my dear. But you didn't know right away. <laughs> well, almost. Where is Tony, anyway? <laughs> he went to the Rainier Institute and wants me to cover on the Hutchins case. <laughs> <laughs> Find it funny. <laughs> And you would like Mr. Rainier to help you find your brother, Ralph, is that right? Right. You see, we were separated when we were kids. And I've tried every way I know possible to contact him, and I haven't been able to. Lately, and I don't know why, but I get the feeling that he's been trying to contact me. Call him. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I was upstairs meditating, and suddenly something drew me to this room. You. You brought me here. You wish to find someone, someone dear to you. 
Your mother? No. Perhaps a brother. Yes, your brother. <laughs> You're absolutely right, my brother. We're having a little meeting tonight. It's very informal, very friendly. Perhaps you'd like to come. I sure would. We're supported by voluntary contributions, but we do have a $50 registration fee. Well, consider me registered. If money will help find my brother, I'll spend it. See you all tonight. Thank you, Mr. Batts. Thank you. Bye. 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 How many times have I told you to let me take care of the new people? So check him out. Visiting you is easier now. When I first started coming here, I found it very difficult. I like being able to talk like this. Helps. Sometimes I, I get kind of lonely. Lewis, if you only knew how lonely I am for you. Wish I could talk to Billy Joe direct. Will you ever? She's got to learn how. She could learn from you. Really, I never thought I'd see anything like that. Oh, you'll see more than that. Why, when I first came here, I didn't believe the things that they did here were possible. Was that really your husband's voice we heard? Absolutely. To tell you the truth, I always thought things like this were put on. Well, you'll find differently. And here's just the girl that can tell you about it, Nancy Pendleton. Hi, Frank Baxter. Hi. You're the man who's looking for his brother. Right. Yeah. And he needs some encouragement, dear. <laughs> what can I help you with? You, well, you know what you do here. You know. Oh, well, I'm afraid I don't have time for a long explanation right now. But uh, Mr. Rayner's having a party at his house tomorrow night. Why don't you go there? I, uh, um... Well, how about lunch tomorrow instead? Well, I'm... Please. I'd sure appreciate it. <laughs> All right. I want more. And that's all there is to it. I am sick and tired of these crummy little handouts. You got over $200,000 from Mrs. Haskins, and what did I get? $2,500. Nancy, we can't afford any more. Baloney! He stacked away over $300,000 from people that I've steered this way. You wouldn't have got one-tenth of what you got from Mrs. Haskins alone without me. I want from now on one-third of the entire take, and I want $5,000 up front now. Don't try to blackmail me, Nancy, dear. Leonard, dear, I am not trying. You just remember that if I blow the whistle, you've had it. I said don't blackmail me. Give her the money. Give her the money. Tony. Have you lunch with the sidekick? You suppose I could get a little money from this establishment? Sure. How much? A couple of hundred. Is this the Hutchins report? Yeah. Different girl. Same motel. Wow. Wonder what kind of vitamin this guy takes. Thank you. So you work for Rainier part-time and Dr. Hudson full-time? That's right. How did you happen to get in at the psychic trip? Well, I, uh, found out I had a gift. How long have you been looking for your brother? A long, long time. What do you do for Dr. Hudson? I'm his secretary. Thank <clears throat> you.
Where? I'm getting some very heavy psychic vibes. What kind? The kind that says you're very curious about a lot of things except how the Institute can help you find your brother. Well, before I get into anything, I always like to know the people involved. Ah. Oh, oh, better yeah. get everything out of there. That ink is stained. Thank you. Look, I've got to be getting back to work. My boss is a real stickler for time. I know, I know, you were busy. Let's make up for it. Come for dinner tonight. I'm sorry, I promised my wife we'd... We'll, we'll do it just like we used to. I mean, uh, flowers, and candles, and champagne. I'll cook your favorite. Not tonight. Yes, tonight. We haven't been alone in three weeks. If I were a patient and I said You're I needed you... You're not my patient, Nancy. I want to see you tonight. And if you don't show up, you won't see me tomorrow. Salad green and fifth. Salad green and fifth. Yeah. Ten to one. There's one. What's your name? Thomas. Where are you from? San Francisco. I'll be by tomorrow to collect. Don't hold your breath. Speak to Samson. Top of the outlets. checked on you this morning. You gave me a phony name. What are you after? Nothing. Good for you. Then you'll have no trouble staying away from the Institute. And Billy Joe Haskins. The life will be very unpleasant for you. Do you understand? Good. Experience. What happened? Had a visitor in my hotel room. Well, who was he? He didn't say. Well, what did he look like? Fairly tall, gray hair, distinguished looking. Sounds like a lawyer. What did he want? For me to stay away from an institute and a Billy Joe Haskins in that order.
Hello? This is Frank Baxter. I want to know why Rainier just put the squeeze on me. Look, you know that better than I do. I know you've got a con going on. I want in. <sighs> Please, Baxter, the last thing this scam needs is another con man. I'm willing to buy in. How much? What would it take? Five thousand. I could get that. Tonight? Probably. But what would I get for my money? Look, you put five thousand dollars in my hand and I'll give you something that'll tell you exactly what Rainier is doing. You got a deal. You know where the tennis courts are at Rancho Park? Sure, I know where they are, but there's... I'll meet you there in an hour. Run an errand for me. Who's Marvin Telford? A man that's going to give you $5,000 in cash thinking you're me. Get it and bring it to the Rancho Park tennis courts. I'll be waiting for you there. I'm going to call Marvin Telford right now and tell him I'm coming over to pick it up. Well, what if he asks me something I can't answer? Figure it out. You're the one that got all the A's on his report card. But you know what kind of... Yes, sir, Mr. Telford. Let me ask you. Do you suppose there's any way that we can recoup the money that Mrs. Haskins has given to Rainier so far? How much has she given him? Didn't I tell you? $200,000. Oh, yes, yes, of course. What would it be worth if I could get it back? What do you suggest? Well, let me see. You give me a free hand. And 10% of what I get back for you. And we'll forget my usual fee and expenses. Fine. car park here when you arrived? I don't know. I'm not sure. Oh, uh, yes or no? Tell you the truth, I don't remember. Hey, all I'm asking is if you know what these letters mean. H-U-D. And I'm telling you, I can't say for sure. Well, don't say for sure. Just say what's on your mind. Uh, she worked for a doctor. His name's Hudson. Hudson. And you don't think that means anything? Look, Martinez, the girl was about to sell me something that was going to expose Rainier. I don't care about Rainier. She didn't write R-A-I. She wrote H-H-U-D. could stand for anything. It could stand for Huddle, Hudson. Go on. You don't even know if it's the girl's lipstick. We'll know. 
Just as soon as the lab report comes in, we'll know for sure. Can I see you over here for a minute, Lieutenant? Sure. There's nothing else to do. What's going on back there? Somebody smoked Nancy. Oh, you're kidding. I wish I was. Well, what are you going to do now? Take a look at her apartment before they do. That's cool. That girl was gonna sell me for five grand. Uh, speaking of five grand. Well, if she was gonna sell you something, wouldn't she have brought it with her? Looked in her car, looked in her purse. Maybe we'll find a clue here. seen him since I arrived. Oh, Mrs. Haskins, he meditates every evening between 6.30 and 7.30. I'm sure that he'll be here very shortly now. Oh, look, here he comes now. It's about time you joined your guests. I've been wanting to tell you about a dream I had of Lewis. I saw him plain as day. Take it easy. Stay out of sight, and I'll be right back. Okay. I thought I saw you walking in here. Oh, Mr. Telford. Thank goodness you're here. Would you mind walking uh, me back into that party? I need moral support to face that circus again. Well, I just came out here for some... No, 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 no. Come on in and have a drink. Oh, this you is know, coming really through tonight. You, you have uh, two sons and a daughter. The daughter is very young and very pretty. Uh, I... I'm afraid I can't see anything else for the moment. Except a prosperous future. Yes. Thank you. I didn't expect to see you here, Mr. Baxter. 
Thought you decided you didn't believe in psychic phenomena after all. Things have changed my mind. I have a different attitude now. You see, there was this girl I was supposed to meet in Rancho Park. Uh, come this way, young man. Mr. Baxter? Yes. Would you please order me a Bellini? Bellini? Be my pleasure. Thank you. Bartender, a Bellini, please, for the lady. One question before I go. I'd like to know what the letters H-U-D mean. That's the foggiest idea. Now leave. I'll leave. I don't like being pushed. Your jewelry is just beautiful. Oh, I oh, thank you. But I'd trade my whole collection for the Star of the Four Kings. Oh. You've probably never heard of it. Star of the Four Kings? Sure I have. I read about it in the paper the other day. You know about it? Yes. Why, well, how nice. Shall we toast the Star of the Four Kings? Thank you. Cheers. Well, what are you doing here? I want to ask Renier a few questions. If you think he did it, you're right. No way. No way. I already have the murderer. Hudson. He was having an affair with her. My men picked him up 15 minutes ago. Based on what? Based on facts. He has no alibi for his time tonight. And I found some of his clothes at the murdered girl's apartment. Okay? Let me ask you something. If it was Hudson, why didn't he just go back to the girl's apartment and take his clothes and anything else that might times in the murder in? believe in the supernatural. I think you're quite intuitive. Thank you. Thank you very much. You must forgive me. I've got to go now. Certainly. Good night. I hope you find your brother. Thank you. And I hope you get your diamond someday. Thank you. Let me know whenever you're ready to leave. Yes. <laughs> well, you... You yeah. say you saw Louie. Hey, Tony. What kind of music is this? But I told you to stay in the car. How did you happen to get past Martinez anyway? I was just talking to him in the driveway. Trade secret. Man, I can't believe this. Haven't you ever heard of the Grateful Dead? The Hudson Brothers or the Who? The what? Not the what, the who. That's what H-U-D means. Not Dr. Hudson. The Hudson Brothers. Come on, let's go. Yes, sir. What can I do for you? Good evening. Oh, I'm with the Open Palm Collection Agency, and I want to find out and see if there's... Easy. Easy, fella. Easy. Uh, uh, we'll take care of you. Uh, You'll be all right. Uh, Come on inside. Uh, Come on. Easy. Uh, take it easy. Come on in there and sit down. Give me a glass of water. I'll get you a glass of water.
nothing. That's music. What'd you expect? I don't know. I'm going to play them all until I find it. I like being able to talk like this, you know. Just say what comes into my mind. Used to think you had to be loony to see a psychiatrist. Well, let's see, Lewis. You've been coming here, oh, about three weeks now. Has it helped? A little. Wish I could talk with Billy Joe direct. Tell her how I feel about her going to see them astrologers and fortune tellers all the time. They're all phonies. Maybe you could both come here sometime. I'd like that. She could learn from you. Sometimes I'm kind of lonely. I never knew Lewis was consulting a psychiatrist. Very clever on Mr. Rainier. Just lifted Lewis Haskins' voice from the tapes the psychiatrist made. Spliced them together and just played back what he needed. But how'd you get hold of them? From that girl Nancy. She was Dr. Hudson's secretary. What's your next move? To prove Rainier killed her. I don't want him getting away with it. You're reneging on our deal. Reneging? Our deal was for me to expose Rainier. I did it. I don't mean that. I have no complaints about your work. I'm talking about your fee. When you came here to get the payment for Nancy, you said you would try to recover the money Mrs. Haskins had already given to Rainier. We agreed that instead of your usual fee, you would receive 10% of everything you recovered. Isn't that correct? Ah, uh, yes, sir. Yeah, you're right. That's, that's correct. What made you make a deal like that? Because I thought I could do it. The fast buck again, huh? No. Will you two stop it? What he did was maybe not right, but come on, his intentions were good. I'm sorry, Tony. I really am. Don't worry. I put a bet on a horse yesterday and it came in. I could pay you back every cent that you lost in the deal. It's horses again, huh? Beautiful. Beautiful! You won? Thousand bucks. Give me it. I needed to pay my hotel bill. I'll pay your hotel bill. I gotta go pick it up. I'll drive you. Okay, okay, but first we gotta stop off at Rainier's place. Listen, I mean it. I can get that money back. Oh, man. I have got a fantastic plan. No. Number one, I go tell Lieutenant Martinez what we know. Give him a copy of the cassette, let him take it from there. Then we take up your plan for getting the money back. You sure you can do this, Chef? You want to get Rainier for murder, don't you? Yeah. Well, so do I. And I want to get my hands on that money, too. Trust me, Tony. We'll make it. I tried to stay here. I'll get your winnings and pick you up in an hour. Okay. Coming here, I found it very difficult. You can burn that if you want. It's a copy. I found the original in Nancy's car. I guess you missed it. What do you want? In. Or I send that to Mrs. Haskins. And you start packing for a place unknown. We'll go right ahead. We've already gotten everything that we want out of this operation. Oh, really? Well. That's the way you want it. Uh, suppose we include you in. What then? I show you how to take her and take her big. For 500,000 in one shot. 500,000? I don't believe it. That's what I thought. No imagination. Plucking the chicken is my business. This won't be my first time. But if you don't believe me... Uh, maybe, maybe if you uh, came up with uh, something we liked plan that made sense.
sucker. It's Thanksgiving, Turkey. I got a thousand bucks here. Needs a home bad. How about it? You can sell Mrs. Haskins a phony gem, but why do you have to run the next seance? What can you do that I can't do? What's the difference? You said you'd go along, so go along. All you have to do is go through your tapes, and if Lewis Haskins ever used the word diamond, believe me, we are in diamond. All right, now, if we go along with this, and if Mrs. Haskins comes up with a half a million, you pay for the cost of setting up, and we split the take even, right? You're an understanding man. looking to break my legs, Ben Sampson. I don't believe it. I know you. Hello, hello, Ben. Chef Thomas. Wait, wait a second. Wait, hold on. Have I got a deal for you? So we take in a half million dollars, and I wind up with my expenses and the money you already owe me. Believe me, Ben, I'm not going to wind up with anything. It's the best I can do for now. You're going to wind up alive. When do we meet the supernatural characters? Definitely tomorrow. And you'll have a copy of the necklace ready? Please. See you later. I wish I knew what you're going to do, Mr. Baxter. I would like the four of us to join hands. I want to cross over 
and see Mr. Haskins. I felt him calling to me. I am leaving now. And I'm going into darkness. I want to cross over and see Lewis Haskins. I want to cross over into my astral body. I am far away now. Far, far away. Rushing into another dimension. Yet, I'm here. I'm here. And, yes, I see Lewis Haskins. Lewis. 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 Lewis Haskins. I see you. Speak to me. Speak. Billy Joe. <coughs> Billy Joe must have diamond. The star. Askins. You are leaving now. The star. The star. <clears throat> Mr. Baxter, are you all right? <gasps> That's it. It's the star of the four kings. It's Lewis. He wants me to have it. All right, I'm impressed. How did you do it? Trade secret. I told you I'd make you rich. Okay, what's our next move? Mrs. Haskins will now go to Mr. Telford saying she wants to buy the star. Mr. Telford will find out that Ben Sampson, diamond broker, is just the man he could buy it from. Nichols would be a phony. Well, that Telford's not stupid. How do we know he'll fall for it? That's my job. You'll be there when he does. Ah, right on the dot, you must be Mr. Telford. I try to be punctual. You're Mr. Sampson? Yes. Uh, as I told you over the phone, Mr. Telford, I'm not sure we can make a deal. I wish my client were here. He was due at 9.30. He must have been held up. You know, I've already arranged to sell the Star of the Four Kings for $400,000 cash. Mm. And as I told you, assuming the Star is genuine, my client is prepared to pay $500,000. Yes, well, I have communicated that offer to Mr. Stewart. He said he would think about it. Good. Ah, oh, Mr. Stewart. This is Mr. Telford, the gentleman I spoke to you about. Mr. Stewart? I have brought the Star of the Four Kings for your expert to examine and then place in your safe. Mr. Stewart. Mr. Telford. I hear you're willing to pay $100,000 more than my client has already agreed to sell for. That's right. Sorry, my friend. I must reject your offer. Why? I am a man of honor. I made a deal. Gave my word. Tomorrow at 12 o'clock, I shall keep my word. <laughs> Unless I'm mistaken, sir. A uh, rumor has it the star is being sold for, uh, uh, shall we say, a military venture? Oh, far removed from these quiet shores, of course. I read the papers. $500,000 will buy you a great deal more arms and ammunition than four. What makes you think my client is interested in arms and ammunition? What is more important? Keeping your word in a trivial business transaction or making sure that your client's people are adequately supplied. You know, Mr. Stewart, $100,000 is $100,000.
Be here at 11.30 tomorrow morning with the money, Mr. Telford. We shall consummate the deal. That's fine. If he's not here by that time, we'll honor the other offer. Certainly. Mr. Telford. Okay, gentlemen. One down, Billy Joe to go. You just got to know there's no finer woman in the world than my Billy Joe. Oh, I guess she's got her hang-ups with them mediums and psychics of hers, but, well, she's a good woman. I've enjoyed her, but I'm just not happy these days. That's why I'm consulting you. I've really been taken in, haven't I? <laughs> that was a pretty good performance you put on, Mr. Thomas. I'm sorry about that. I was afraid that if I said anything beforehand, you wouldn't play your part. What can we do about those rascals? Depends on you. Not. All right, now we understand each other. My share is 250,000. I just split the rest with your business. Uh, maybe we, uh, maybe we should get in the other room. We got plenty of time. She and Telford are probably still at the bank. Benjamin Sampson speaking. Oh, Mr. Telford. Oh. No, I'm afraid if 300,000 is all you can raise, that won't do it. Just a moment, please. He's at the Westland Bank with his client, Mrs. Haskins. They're having trouble raising the money. They can get 300,000 now, but they can't get the other two until this afternoon. Tell him the deal is off. What do you mean, tell him the deal's off? What else can we do? Tell him we'll settle for the 300,000. Are you crazy? I've already told the man I have an offer for 400,000. Uh, Mr. Telford, I'm sorry, that's not going to... I beg your pardon. Get his number at the bank. We'll think of something. May I have that number there, please? Yes. Thank you very much. I'll call you right back. Well, who's got $200,000 in his pocket? Gonna have to call him back and tell him that's it. And let 300000 go just like that? What do you suggest? Uh, we can't, can't let the money go. We, we've got to change the deal. Our deal. How? We'll, we'll take the 300000 I get two fifty. You share the remaining fifty. I told you we can't take 300,000. I'll put up the other 200,000. I've got it. Oh, you end up with a quarter of a million dollars and we end up with practically nothing. Take your choice. Ben, don't pay expenses. All right. How do you propose to manage this? Don't you worry about that. Mrs. Uh, Haskins, please. I, I believe she's there with Mr. Telford. Mrs. Haskins. <laughs> yes, this is Leonard. How are you? Good, good. Mrs. Haskins, I was, I was sitting here in my living room and I had a sudden, call it, telepathic call from you. I feel you're in need of something you must have very quickly. <laughs> I know. Yeah. 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 It's genuine. It's more than worth the money you're paying for it. I'll send you a check. Now, Marvin, don't you feel guilty about being so skeptical of Leonard? After all, it was nothing short of a miracle that made him call us at the bank like that. I owe you an apology, sir. Oh, Mr. Stewart, you'll be happy to know that Mr. Telford has raised the money. May I introduce the purchaser, Mrs. Haskins, Mr. Stewart. Mr. Stewart. How do you do? Uh, if you gentlemen have the money, uh, we have the papers already. Mrs. Haskins, please. Thank you.
Someone must be awfully sad having to sell something so beautiful. On the contrary, madame. When my client thinks of all the weapons this sale will provide, he will be most grateful. Weapons? Weapons? Yes, weapons. In a war, one needs weapons. But why wasn't I told? Marvin, did you know that my money was to be used to make war? Leonard, would you like your money to be used for bloodshed? Well, if, uh, if you don't buy it, someone else will. Well, then let it be someone else. I'm sorry. I can't do it. Marvin, I want my money back. Sorry. C'est la vie. Excuse us, gentlemen. Are you sure this is what Lewis would want? Why don't you keep your big mouth shut? You realize what you just cost me? Just a moment. We have a little money to pay out here. What do you mean? That's my money. Let's be fair about this. Let's just try to be fair. 500 for a uh, gentleman here. A couple of thousand for my expenses. There you are. Be grateful I don't take it all. You can keep the case, it's genuine leather. making a face something like that and then stop him from looking at what he walked off with. <laughs> and this stuff here, this counterfeit money just gets better every day. I love it. Oh, where's the real stuff? Oh. Oh. Ten thousand? dollars. We're even, right? Hey, Ben, that's not my money! I know it's a fake, but it's beautiful. All right, you men can leave. I'll see you in San Francisco. Just answer one question. If you could do the same thing to me, would you? I've always liked you. You're a sincere crook. Something you wanted? Just to remind you that you still owe me some money. 
I'll send you a check. I'm going to need this 5,000. Uh, I'll simply deduct it from the check I send you. Could we borrow one of your men to escort us to the bank? Be my guest. Thank you. Bye. Did I do a good job? An Academy Award performance. Oh, I'm so grateful to you, Mr. Thomas. I hope I've learned my lesson. No more of these psychics and their fancy institutes. From now on, the old-fashioned mediums. Good. Be. <laughs> Thank you. Bye, young man. Bye. Thanks for the tip on Rainier. And the funny money, eh? You got him, man. Only thing, amigo. He says you passed it all to him. Not me. Forget about that. Here. Here's the proof that he killed Nancy Pendleton. This was her money. Ink stain and all. Just have you men dust it. They'll find his prints all over it. He took it from her when he killed her. It's evidence, Tony, but it doesn't prove he killed her. What do you mean? So far, we have a motive. With that tape you gave me, we don't have opportunity. I'll keep this just in case. But he killed her. I believe it. Prove it, Tony, and I'll let Dr. Hudson go. I'll see you later. They get rain here? Yeah. Good. They can throw the key away on that squirrel. What do you mean? I mean he killed that girl. How do you know for sure? We went to Rainier's house. I went into his garage and touched the hood of his car, and it was hot. I mean, really hot. Not only that, but there was fresh mud on his tire, and I'll bet you ten to one the impressions the cops took will match his tire. Think you're the detective, huh? Well, the way I figure it, it's that girl Nancy called Rainier back after she talked to you and tried to shake him down for more money than you were paying her. That's why he killed her. Ow. You mean to tell me you've known all along that Rainier was guilty? Yep. Why didn't you say something? Well, if I would have said anything, they would have locked Rainier up and we would have never gotten the money out of him. Do you realize that you committed a crime? Oh, come on. What crime? I just got that little old lady her money back. I'm talking about withholding evidence. Ah, it's a minor matter. He said Dr. Hudson not to fool around with other women. You're, you're, you're impossible. That's just impossible. Now, come on. Get out of here. Last thing we need to do is be seen again. I'll see you at the office. Shep? Girls? Hi. <laughs> You're not going to believe this, but we've got the makings here of a beautiful situation. But I have this brother. Good looking. Terrific person. Well, 